Alright guys, Touch Cry back again today. I hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And yesterday was certainly a very interesting one at the CDL at Stage 1 Major. Some very spicy topics to run through in today's video regarding how some of these teams are completely blowing advantages. And also Clayster versus Dashi. Dashi certainly on the revenge tour so far. And later today, of course, the big matchup, the E Classico, is going to be in effect. Dallas Empire versus Optic Chicago. Who's going to take down this one? Certainly intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps on the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Before we get into things, we wanted to run through the final series of yesterday. That was Toronto Ultra versus Minnesota Rocker. And Toronto have disrespected my pick so many times already this major, or really this season actually, sorry, so far, in the Super Week especially, that I was like, okay, get them out of the tourney. Rocker are going to win this one. However, it doesn't happen. Both teams play this Moscow Hardpoint incredibly slow. It actually goes down to time, something we haven't seen in a Moscow Hardpoint, because typically on the maps that have less money hills, let's say, it's, uh, well, it's more easy for it to go down to time, but uh, for some reason in this game, even though Moscow is full of money hills, it actually goes all the way down to time in the end. Tronto Ultra win it 250 or 241, sorry, to 218. Then in the search and destroy another, we're going to talk about this in a couple of minutes' time, but a lot of teams having full collapses right now, right? And the Tronto Ultra go up 4 1, they then choke the series, I mean, it goes, they then choke the map, even it goes all the way to 5 5. Then, I mean, this round, Priester should have won, but Method somehow clutched it. I mean, he kind of choked away this one. Then it was left on to attach in a 1 versus 1, game 2, round 11. And if there's any situation where you want a player to be, it's going to be a tat ready. He's phenomenal in his 1v1 situations. He gets the job done. It was actually a 1v2 in round 11, but an absolute chaos of a checkmate search and destroy. Then we go into the control and Rocker closes out in a 3-1 fashion. Pretty impressive accuracy. Goes 25 in 19 right here. But game 4 was certainly not the same story. Toronto win the garrison half point 252-28. And despite a phenomenal map from attach and also major maniac, as you can see right here, 1.71 KT. Accuracy just got absolutely bodied 11 in 20. One of the worst KDs, at least, we've seen in a half point so far this season. So they drop down to a game five, and then it's an absolute full collapse in the game five. I mean, Toronto Ultra win this one six to one in a game mode where Minnesota so far this season have been so good. Their half point hasn't been solid at all. They lose both half points again. I mean, that they're winning game two search and game three. I mean, they're relying on a two three five strategy. That's not going to work all the time. Ultra get the job done. And Minnesota Rocker, despite what we thought about this team potentially in the preseason, I know I did a video talking about which teams might be overrated. I mentioned Minnesota Rocker was one of them and maybe that won't prove to be the case over time and they'll bounce back very nicely indeed. But right here, I mean, they drop out like 9th through 10th of this tournament. That's not something we would have expected from this squad. Losing, I mean, obviously their pool play matches in Group A didn't go so well. And certainly something to talk about right now is how these groups actually look right. Because you look at Group A, none of these teams yet have won a series. Thieves lost, Rocker lost, Ravens of course lost straight away, Subliners lost and Surge lost as well. So in Group Bravo, I think it's actually Paris Legion, the only team that lost over here here so far because they played another team from Group B. So it's only showing Group B looking very solid indeed. What does that mean for a team like the Thieves, for example? What does that mean for a team like the Rocker, who have, yeah, they've found themselves in the difficult spots here? What do they do going forward? Right on paper, their team looks pretty good, but um, it clearly didn't work out this stage one. And many teams, I'm sure, like if you're finishing outside the prize money, only top eight get paid. If you're finishing outside the prize money, you've got to have some serious considerations for what the champ seeding looks like because the World Championship this year, it's going to be on LAN as we talked about the other day at least is being planned to be done on LAN and the only the top 8 teams in the league get to go. Last year all 12 teams got to go because they made it online so they decided okay everyone can come to champs but this year it's only 8. So already if stage 1 you're having a poor performance like this and you're in the bottom 4 of the league you're not in a good position at all when champs comes around. If you're not in the top 8 for the world championship based on the seeding for the entire season that is an absolute disaster right. So a lot of these teams that place in the positions that they have done are going to have to have serious considerations. Do we keep the current roster what do we do what do we do to change things up because there's a lot of amateur players out there right now which would love a spot in the league and if subliners lose today for example to the mutineers you've got to imagine that hydra is getting his spot in that team relatively soon one of the major considerations then we've really had these last couple of days is the amount of surge level breakdowns as octane describes it that are happening on the stream i mean so many teams just completely throwing away advantages it's really interesting to see i wonder exactly what the cause is for this it makes things very entertaining to watch certainly because any situation they can completely throw away a map or throw 
Air series. And while it's happened a number of times already, the teams have a significant advantage, then they blow it away. And uh, well, as you see, Octane definitely, Seattle Surge have done that, their fair share of that already. Awakening says witnessing a bunch of breakdowns right here. And these are just a couple of examples for yesterday, right? LA Thieves versus LAG. They're up 5 2 in the Search and Destroy. Throw this one away, goes to a 6 5. And certainly these things happened before, but we've seen a lot of times so far this season where teams are making full collapses in certain game modes. And well, it definitely makes things very exciting to watch. And teams early do not seem to always have the ice in these maps. This one as well, I mean, Nature just says right here, tough stretch for our League of Legends, Call of Duty and Valorant teams. I believe in our players and coaches. I know we'll do what it takes to improve and strive for better performances. Sorry to all the fans. Winning is an amazing feeling, but losing hits like a freight train. And 100 Thieves, Los Angeles Thieves, have the potential to go out of the tournament later today if they lose their match to the Toronto Ultra. And once again, that'd be a turn up for the books, right? If a lot of these teams go out earlier than we were expecting to, certainly something to keep your eyes on later today. This as well as an example, right? This five round in a row stretch the Mutineers had against the Paris Legion, completely choking away that Miami Session Destroy when they had the advantage. This has really been the big one so far this season, right? The only reverse sweep so far when New York looked so good against the Dallas Empire early on in that series and then they took the control and just run away with the last couple of maps to the Dallas Empire. So certainly a lot of teams are choking and throwing away series right now as Scrap says down really bad. Wow at the present time. Jacob, of course, we looked at this tweet yesterday. Very frustrated, absolutely pathetic series out of us from Los Angeles Thieves. Will they be able to bounce back today? Who really knows? But um, yeah, honestly, so many interesting questions to be asked as to what these teams look like going forward. Because do not forget, these new 14-day contracts that they have in the CDL now, that allows these teams to just sign a substitute or a potential substitute player and trial them out for only 14 days on a signed contract. If they don't want to go with them, then they can just you know, move on from there with their original team or something. But it's certainly much easier now for these teams to actually pick up a substitute if they want to. And of course, Draz is on the bench over here, seeing what he did with OGLA last season, thinking maybe it is my time to shine once again. Clayster clearly not very happy also. One thing I also wanted to go through before we get into the matches for today was this from January, right? So on the 11th of January, this is around about the time where Optic Chicago did their pe player power rankings video, right? So they put the players into certain tiers. I think uh, like maybe it was an A or a B tier for Clayster. And then Dashi came out at the time and said, I'll put him straight in the C tier or something to that effect. So Clay comes out and says, yo at Dashi, what is up with the C tier, bro? Didn't I body you for the last two years straight in Black Ops 4 when Clay won the World Championship and also won the Dallas Empire in Call of Duty Modern Warfare? Dashi comes back and says, okay, this is a DM from, from Clayster saying, okay, just showing the proper impressions. And Zero comes back and says, like, no way, Clayster is actually this scared of you. And Clay then says, terrified of which branded, the benched one or the kill hole one, right? So this is a pretty impressive tweet right here, or at least uh, looking back on it now, talking about how, okay, Dashi either gets benched as he did an opt game in Los Angeles in the 2020 Modern Warfare season, or he's just playing for kills, right? And he's not actually playing to win the game, he's just playing to get a lot of kills on the map. And as Dashi then comes back, I'm so excited to see what you can do this year with no Zio, so Shotzi, Illy, or Hook, or the Tiny Terror. So, of course, when Glaster won the World Championship these last couple of years on a United, he had either the Tiny Terror, Simba, and Abizi at his side, or he had the trio, the, the Zio trio, I suppose you could argue, on the Dallas Empire last season. Clay comes back with this from our Black Ops 4, 250 to 52 at the time in the winners' finals. But as Dashi says, no one is saving you this year, brother. Looking forward to seeing you on the battlefield. And Dashi was certainly out for revenge yesterday, as you can see right here in this overall KD. 81 in 38 over the course of the series. Clay had a, you know, 0.72. Really, the entire team got body this series. So definitely some big questions to be asked for what the New York Subliners do going forwards, especially when Formal's dropping like a really quiet 1.4 in this series. And honestly, if Optic play like this again later today, they're going to have a very difficult time, or Dallas are going to have a very difficult time getting it past the green wall right now. Octane's Birdo tweets this I thought was pretty funny as well, given that Subliners got pretty much destroyed yesterday. New York Subliners only hope that big the Doug Center Martin comes back into play, was on their team as a substitute last season. Who really knows what's going to happen, but it could be a possibility that Doug gets back in the league. They certainly need to get Doug in ASAP if they want to take this team to the next level. I'm not exactly sure who Doug is teaming with right now in the challenger side. Supposedly there's been some absolute chaos of roster changes going on there over these last several days. So we'll have to see what happens, but uh, yeah, I don't imagine this is happening anytime soon, but uh, certainly with Hydra on the bench, Subliners might be considering roster changes, and certainly other teams will be right now. I think especially if you're a Seattle, if you're maybe not a Paris, because they honestly look pretty good, they kind of just threw away their series that they lost right here. They could have done much better than they did, but certain teams are going to be having to have a serious look in the mirror right now, especially after maybe what happens later today. So these are the four matches of the day. Phase Gorillas, then Empire Optic, these are both the winner's bracket games. I think that uh, even though LAG have looked so good I was really impressed by their victory yesterday. It's just tough to bet past phase in this series, right? And then Empire versus Optic. I mean, this is going to be a really spicy one, right? I thought coming into this tournament, I might just be favoring Empire. But now I look at how bad Group A was 
on paper, like they're getting completely bodied by Group B in first round of these matches, you're then thinking, okay, like how good actually are the Dallas Empire? Optic is certainly coming into the series with an incredible amount of fire, right? Like they really want to win this one. I'm not sure that Empire quite want to win it quite as much. And as a result, I think you can make a great case that Optic are favorites right now. I'm probably going to favor them in this series. I think maybe even a 3-1 or, you know, a 3-2 possibly if it comes down to the clutch factor. I think that Optic should be favorites. I mean, that's going to be a massive series to watch either way it goes. Then the third series of the day, Subliners Mutineers. This is an elimination game. I really don't know how to call this one, right? Because Mutineers are there dominating their way through the losers bracket. They've looked very good so far. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Mutineers take this. I think it could be a 50-50. I mean, yeah, I'm really not sure how to call this. I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts down below. And then LA Thieves versus the Ultra. I think I'm going to back the Thieves just to win this series. I think they'll probably drop out in the next round of losers, but Slasher and Crow have certainly been known to make a good losers bracket run from time to time. I think they'll manage to just about make it work here. This is the overall bracket as it stands right now, and uh, maybe I'll do the same thing later today, where after the three series I'll make the video and then discuss the whole Los Angeles Thieves Ultra thing in tomorrow's one. But enjoy to hear your thoughts in the comment section below regardless. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Now you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Time we go for a real quick. Oh my god, let's do it. Quick listen in. <laughs> quick listen in with Optic. Let's go. Time we go for a real quick. Oh my god, let's do it. Quick listen in. <laughs> quick listen in with Optic. Let's go.